So in the next section of the skeletal system, we're going to talk about articulations and movements. An articulation or joint is where two or more bones come together. And there are two methods of classifying joints. The first method is by the degree of motion. And the second method of classifying joints is by what fills the joint space. To classify a joint by the degree of motion, we have to look at the amount of movement that the joint can perform. And there are three degrees of motion classifications for joints. The first one is called synarthrosis, or non-movable or immovable joints. An example of an immovable joint would be the bones of the skull. The second classification for the degree of motion is amphiarthrosis, which are slightly movable joints. The example of a slightly movable joint pictured are the vertebrae of the vertebral column. And finally, the last classification for the degree of motion is diarthrosis, or freely movable joints. An example of the freely movable joint pictured here is the knee. The second method for classifying a joint is by structural classification. And in structural classification, we have to look at what fills the space between the joints, or between the two bones. There are three structural classifications of joints. The first structural classification is called a fibrous joint. The second structural classification is called the cartilaginous joint. And the last structural classification is called the synovial joint. The first structural classification of joints is called the fibrous joint. And in the fibrous joint, the space between the bones is filled with fibrous tissue. Examples of fibrous joints would be the sutures of the skull, a syndesmosis, which would be the interosseous membrane between the radius and the ulna, and gomphosis, in which the ligaments anchor the tooth to the gum. The second structural classification of joints is called a cartilaginous joint. And in a cartilaginous joint, the space between the bones is filled with cartilage. Examples of cartilaginous joints in the body would be the sternal costal joint, in which hyaline cartilage is found between the sternum and the ribs, or the costals. Another type of cartilaginous joint is a joint between two vertebrae, in which an intervertebral disc, or fibrocartilage pad, is found between adjacent vertebrae. And a last example of a cartilaginous joint would be the pubic symphysis, in which a fibrocartilage pad is found between the two pubic bones. And finally, the last structural classification of joints is the synovial joint. And within a synovial joint, the space between the bones is filled with fluid and surrounding supporting connective tissue. All synovial joints will have the following structures. Here you have two bones. And surrounding these two bones, is the first structure of a synovial joint called the synovial membrane. The function of the synovial membrane is to produce a substance called synovial fluid. Synovial fluid acts as a lubricant to help reduce friction within the joint. Synovial fluid is located within the joint along with another structure that also helps reduce friction within the joint called articular cartilage. Surrounding the synovial membrane is a structure called the joint capsule or fibrous capsule. The function of a joint capsule is to stabilize the joint. And finally, the last structure of a synovial joint is a dense, regular, fibrous connective tissue that connects bone to bone. This is called the ligament. Ligaments can be found surrounding the joint, or they can be found within the joint. There are six types of synovial joints. The first type of synovial joint is called the plane joint or gliding joint. 
In a plane joint or gliding joint, adjacent bones have flat surfaces that articulate with one another. Examples of plane joints would be the bones of the wrist or carpal bones and the bones of the ankle or tarsal bones. The second type of synovial joint is the saddle joint. The saddle joint is rare. The saddle joint is found between the bone that makes up the thumb, the palm of the thumb, and the carpal bone or wrist bone that sits beneath it. The bone of the thumb that makes up the palm is called the first metacarpal, and the wrist bone that it articulates with is called the trapezium. The third type of joint is called the hinge joint. And as the name implies, a hinge joint resembles the hinge of a door. An example of the hinge joint would be the elbow and the knee. The fourth type of synovial joint is a pivot joint. And a pivot joint is where one bone rotates about the other. Example of a pivot joint would be between the radius and ulna and between the first two vertebrae of the vertebral column called the atlas and axis. The next type of synovial joint is a ball and socket joint. And in the ball and socket joint, one bone will have a structure that resembles a ball that fits into another bone's socket. Example of a ball and socket joint would be the hip and the shoulder. And finally, the last type of synovial joint is an ellipsoid joint or condyloid joint. And in a condyloid joint, you have a concave surface articulating with a convex surface. Example of an ellipsoid joint or condyloid joint would be the phalanges or bones of the fingers and toes and the sole of your foot or palm of your hand called the metatarsals and metacarpals. The next topic for discussion in the skeletal system are the types of movements. All movements begin in anatomical position. Remember, anatomical position is standing erect with your eyes facing forward, your toes forward, and your palms facing forward. When describing movements, we talk about what planes are these movements parallel to. And there are three planes in the human body. So recall, one plane is called the sagittal plane, another plane is called the frontal plane, and the third plane is called the transverse plane. The first set of movements that we'll discuss are the movements that are parallel to the sagittal plane. The way that we describe movements in the sagittal plane is by looking at the joint angle. The straight white line that you see represents 180 degrees. Movements from 180 degrees to zero is called flexion. Movements from zero degrees to 180 is called extension. And finally, movements greater than 180 degrees is called hyperextension. There are two special movements that occur in the sagittal plane that occur in the ankle. They are called dorsiflexion, which is pulling your toes toward your knees, and plantar flexion, which is pointing your toes away from your knees. The next type of movements are movements that are parallel to the frontal plane. Again, beginning in anatomical position, movements of the frontal plane include abduction and adduction. In abduction, you are moving your appendage away from the midline of your body, and in adduction, you are moving your appendage towards the midline of your body. Again, there are two special frontal plane movements that occur at the ankle. These movements are called inversion and eversion. Inversion is when the sole of your foot points toward the midline of your body, and eversion is where the sole of your foot points away from the midline of your body. Movements that are parallel in the transverse plane are called rotations. So a rotation that occurs within the axial skeleton, we just call a rotation. Any type of rotation that occurs in the appendage is either medial or lateral rotation. In medial rotation, the appendage is rotated toward the midline of the body, whereas in lateral rotation, the appendage is rotated away from the midline of the body. In the forearm, there's a special name for medial and lateral rotation. 
These terms are called pronation and supination. So in pronation is the motion of pouring. So if your palm is face up, when you turn your palm face down, that is pronation. In supination, your palm is face down and you turn your palm face up. And finally, there are special movements that occur in multiple planes. For example, circumduction. Circumduction is a conical movement or a circular movement that occurs in different planes. An example of circumduction would be the motion of pitching a baseball.